And uh, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rahim Bank, a nest manager from Global Hope Malawi. And uh, this time around, we are going to have a discussion on breaking bad news. Objectives. Uh, we are going to define the concept of uh, bad news. And then we are going to discuss key goals in breaking bad news. We are also going to discuss the importance of breaking bad news. And lastly, we are going to demonstrate the process of breaking bad news, utilizing the six uh, step protocol. As we know that However, a patient has a right to information, whether it's good or bad. And the principles of uh, breaking bad news are the same in any situation, whether you are uh, caring a child or you are caring others. And the way in which bad news is broken to the patient or guardian is extremely important to their well being. And it is helpful to check how much information they want to hear or they want to have at any time. So someone might ask to say, what is the bad news? So in simple term, it's any news that drastically and negatively utters the patient's view of his or her future. So examples of bad news can be a person uh, with cancer or someone has lost a loved one or someone uh, having a renal failure <laughs> or heart failure. And palliative care is more effective and more supportive when everyone is aware of the situation and everyone is communicating. So the way how we communicate to uh, patients or guardians will affect how the subsequent care will be like. Key goals in breaking bad news. So we need uh, to understand what are the goals in breaking uh, the news. So parents and children should be treated with openness and honesty. Parents should be acknowledged as experts in the care of their child. Significant news should be shared in a place of privacy. Once we want to share the news, we should make sure that the area or the place where we are having discussion about the news is well secured and is in a private uh, place because the participants sometimes cannot be free to express them th themselves so you need to select the place where the, both part participants are able uh, to express themselves and also to ask questions and also to maybe share emotions and the like Advocates and interpreters should be readily available to support families. When you are sharing the news, you need also to, uh, to invite others uh, supporting staff who can maybe interpret or maybe put uh, the, the, the information in a, uh, in a such a way that the, uh, the patient or guardians are able to understand and make informed decisions. News should be shared using clear, jargon-free, and readily understandable language. We need to assess the level of understanding of all the participants and avoid use of jargons or even medical terms. Breaking significant news should be supported with helpful written material as the child and family often forgets a lot of what has been said due to shock and stress. This is very important for providers to make sure that they have something 
uh, uh, written material where the parents or the patient himself or herself can refer for them to make a conf uh, uh, to make an informed decision about his or her care. We need also to be aware of the cultural context of where you are working. For example, uh, should the child be told about the news or our parents or guardians equal in receiving the news or how is the end of life discussed in that context? So we need to also be aware of the cultural context of the patient themselves. Importance of breaking bad news. It reduces uncertainty about the future. And also it reduces inappropriate hope. As we are, give, we are sharing the news to them, we need also this news will help them or will help the patient or the guardians or parents uh, to reduce their uncertainty, uncertainty about their future. It also encourages informed choices of decisions. If they have understood or if they have known what is going on, they are able to make better decisions for the subsequent care that you are going to provide to them. It also enables appropriate adjustment to the reality of the situation. If you have shared the news, maybe uh, the, the guardians or the patient will remain in the hospital maybe for a month or for a quite period of time, the parents or caregivers or the supporting, uh, uh, those who support the patient can make appropriate adjustments, maybe to say maybe if you, he or he is working, you make some appointments so that you have time to be with the patient. So if you give the news to them, it will help them to uh, adjust to their reality of the situation. It also maintains trust between the caregivers, patient, and healthcare professionals. Oftentimes, breaking bad news is difficult because uh, professionals feel incompetence, especially communicating bad news to a child. Because maybe because of the bond that we have uh, created with the patient or guardians, you feel incompetent yourself in communicating the uh, bad news to the child. You fear of causing pain because no one wants to hear that they have an incurable illness. So it's difficult for some providers to break the news because they fear of causing pain. Sometimes they fear of getting blamed. They assume that if I'm going to tell them that they have a terminal illness, maybe I'll be blamed. They also fear of causing uh, emotional involvement in the patient's distresses. Sometimes it's difficult to break the news because we lack time. Professionals are always busy at times, but a plan can be made to have ample time with the patient. So action that can help, we need to be prepared and deal with the reactions from both the child and their family after receiving bad news. Whatever the reactions, you are not supposed to be panic. You need to stay calm when possible, validate the responses, and you begin to identify options for them and sources of support so that they should not feel abandoned. Ensure you provide contact details of someone for support. Make sure that you have other supporting uh, staff like social workers, uh, even the chaplains to assist or to help uh, the families. Now we go to six step protocol of breaking bad news. Step number one is getting started. That is getting the physical context right. Uh, where the co conversation uh, about, break, uh, about bad news take place, you need to identify a place 
for prime base, as I've already said. You also need to know who will be present and how you are going to begin the news. You should also make sure that the patient or, or parents are comfortable. You also need to be aware of verbal and non-verbal communications because this will guide you if that is the right time or the right place for you to give the information. You also need to create a trusting environment because this will also help you to assess if the, the, the recipients of your news are able to grasp what you are trying to, uh, to, to tell them. You also need to assess the awareness of everyone involved. If you have a parent, uh, you have the patient himself or herself, you have maybe other relatives, so you need to assess their awareness about the news. Because when a child and a family are confronting a life-threatening illness, they may be in, in the one of the following different awareness contexts. The first one is closed awareness, whereby the child is not aware of the diagnosis and those who know it conceal it. It might happen that the child is not aware, but parents or the health care providers are aware, but they are not are uh, communicating. Suspected awareness is whereby the child is suspicious that something is wrong, but is not certain. Mutual pretense is whereby the child, family or health care workers all know, but no one talks about it. And the last one is open awareness, whereby everyone knows and is open about it. So once we assess the, uh, those awareness and we have reached that maybe the, all the group in that session are reached open awareness, this is the right time for us to share the news. Step number two is finding out how much the patient and family know. As a provider, you need to establish what the patient already knows about the condition by asking how serious they think it is and how they expect it to influence the future. We also need to listen to the patient's reply carefully because this will give us a clue on what next are we supposed to say. We also need to check for understanding of medical situation. Step number three is finding out how much the patient wants to know. We need to ask the patient what they want to know and how much they want to be taught, because this will give you a clue to say, if I'm going to continue maybe breaking the news or continue sharing the news to them, they will they going to withstand the news so we need to check how much they want to understand because if you have given the news at once they might not accept it or they might be in different, different ensure from the patient if the condition is serious how much would they like to know about the situation that will help you a lot. Step number four is sharing the information. You need to share the information in small chunks using simple language. You, you, not, you are not supposed to share the whole uh, information at once. You are supposed to use the simple language that the patient or the guardians are able to understand. You also need to use a therapeutic dialogue. That is uh, prioritizing the physical, mental, and emotional well being of patients, guardians, and patients. You also need to provide support to the patient through active listening, like reflecting, asking open-ended questions, seeking clarification and eye contact. 
step number five, that is respond to the patient's feelings. Help the patient name the feelings, and then you need to encourage and allow patient to express their emotions. So you need to uh, try to understand what the patient is feeling, allow enough time to support the patient. You need to be gentle and show through non-verbal communication that you have all the time, even though you don't. Most importantly, whatever the response is, you need to validate it. Step number six, plan and follow through. At this step, you need to begin to identify options. After you have shared the news to them, you suggest sources of support and you start negotiating care management plans for the various problems and issues identified. You provide written information and leaflets for them to take away and read on their own. You also need to identify and incorporate other sources of support like the social worker, the chaplain, and the other uh, uh, support uh, groups that deals with uh, children with cancer. You also need to identify and reinforce coping strategies. Like you invite the religious leaders, if they are Christians, you encourage them maybe to accept the situation, you encourage them to maybe plan for the future using those uh, uh, considering the positive reframing that will also okay. help a lot. To and now step six, that's uh, plan and follow through. You need to begin to identify options and then suggest sources of support and start negotiating care management plans for the various problems and issues you have identified. Don't leave the patient or guardians themselves, help them to identify options. In doing so, this will help them that you are together with them as they are passing through uh, uh, that, that situation. So you also need to provide uh, written information and leaflets for them to take away and read. That will also help uh, them to maybe understand or make informed decisions as they are uh, caring the patient. You also need to incorporate, identify and incorporate other sources of support uh, like the chaplain, uh, psychosocial uh, warfare, uh, even social worker, those can help the patient as we are caring the patient. You also need to identify and reinforce coping strategies. Uh, that is uh, the religious leaders. You also need to maybe tell the patient or the guardians or to accept the situation so that they can make informed decisions. You need to plan together with the patient or the guardians. You should not lift them out because they are the core players in the care they are providing to the patient. After you have done all that, you need to summarize discussion points for the patient and family so that after the meeting, what next are they supposed to do as they are caring the patient? So in summary, in order to break bad news, one needs to use effective communication skills. The way bad news is broken is extremely important to the patient and family's well-being. If news is given in an insensitive way, when patient and family are not ready to hear the bad news, it can be very detrimental. If it happens that they are not ready, don't force. You can postpone the meeting up until a such a time that both parties are comfortable to hear the news. When breaking bad news to a child, use an age appropriate manner. Sometimes uh, uh, children tend to say, I want to know what is it that I'm suffering from. 
So we need to give the news in an age appropriate manner. Never underestimate what a child knows he can understand. So these are the difference. And if you want more on this uh, presentation, Global Hope Learning Academy has open courses that focuses on education opportunities for professionals caring for children with cancer and hematology disorders in Sub-Saharan Africa. So you can register using the link here uh, to this uh, open courses. So among the courses, there is Global Hope Pediatric Palliative Care with five modules, Introduction to Palliative, uh, Pediatric Palliative Care, Communicating with Children and Families, Cultural, Spiritual and Development Consideration, Symptom Assessment and Management, Mod 5 is Care at the Time of End at the time of death. So to register to this open courses, you go to uh, this link. After you click the, on the course that you want to take, this will take you to log in page. So there you go to, is it your first time here? Then you create a new account. This will bring you to a model policies. Click next to the bottom of the page while navigating through the policies. On the consent page, check agree to the model policies. Create a username and password, then enter the request, uh, requested information and click create my new account. You will receive an email with more details about your registration. Be sure to confirm your account. Continue to the home page, click on the course you want to take and click on the self registration button. After that, you are free to go and choose the course that you want to. Thank you very much.